focus more on about the kind of anthropogenic disturbances that lead to conditions that actually require dis uh, restoration. And I've been working at Cast Plateau, I think some of you or many of you have already visited there. So uh, the plateaus, you know, the, the tops of the mountains of Western Ghats are flat. And that's where you have the plateaus. These are special high altitude lateritic plateaus. And the location of uh, Kaas in Satara district, close to Pune. So why Kaas? Kaas is a lateritic uh. plateau. It is home to around 375 flowering species. Many of them are rare, endemic and threatened plants. And still new species are being uh. discovered from this area. You know, new species of spiders, snakes, plants, grasses. This is how the plateau looks like from November to May, or probably slightly later. And then with the first showers, it turns green. And in August, you have something like this, you know, a carpet of pink flowers, which attracts tourists. And September to October, you have different species. So every two to three weeks, the community, the dominant plant community changes, and the colors of the plateau changes, which is, I think, the crux or the, the attracting factor for tourists to this place. This is a species called as, so it has, it is home to a number of, uh, you know, special species is Aponojaton satarensis, endemic to just few of such plateaus like Kaas. And the male and female plant, the male and female individuals are different of this plant. So it's a critically endangered species. You have Rotala Ritchi, which is found on just one pond on Kaas plateau. And it is one of the f few last remaining populations in the world of this species. So now what is the problem? Like it is a cast is a biodiversity rich area, but the biggest problem now is tourism because the numbers have increased suddenly from a few thousands in 2005 to around two to three lakhs recently. Other thing is a mass tourism in short time. Like a lot of national parks, the tourism is spread out for almost seven to eight months, but at cast is just those two months of flowering and the tourist movement is unregulated in in most areas so you know that's a photograph of uh, 2011 where someone has actually ridden a bike over the plants so these are the key issues one is thank you so trampling is one of the key issues of the plateau solid waste generation you have you had this scenario before the fence came up of uh, parking and we have photographs of people actually going on the plants, parking there. And if you still look at the Google Earth images, you can, s even after four years, those paths have not recovered. And until uh, 2011, there was no local community participation. So that's the situation. What changed in 2012? Cars got declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A JFMC was formed, that is a Joint Forest manage communi Management Community, to involve the local people. And a fencing was made up. There was a lot of objection regarding the fencing, but th the Forest Department, I think, has taken caution. Like they have left a 45 centimeter gap, so to allow large, uh, to you know, to allow animal movement. And during the off season, they an they open up certain parts of the fence to allow movement of cattle for grazing. So destruction of plateau was checked by regulating tourist movement. This is a photograph of Panjgani table land. If you've been to Panjgani, so Panjgani was a lot like Kaas a few years ago. And because of tourism pressure, pressure now the most of the native vegetation flora has been wiped out. So uh, what, uh, due to fence, what was done was the plateau was divided into three zones, A, B, and C. And there are no tourists allowed in the C zone, which is a conservation zone. The local people collect 10 rupees per person. So this is, you know, to give employment to the locals and, uh, in, you know, provide economic benefits of tourism to the local communities. Uh, these are the man days. And uh, the, so from 7,40,000, the income is now 17,40,000. There are a number of people, employment generation. We have been conducting regular guide trainings for the people, for the locals there who now work as guides. There are 15 trained guides and a lot of locals, they now are helping in the conservation of critically endangered species. LPG gas has been distributed. There is a no parking zone on the plateau. Parking has been created away. Outreach material is developed. 
a lot of awareness boards were there. So uh, one key issue that I said was of solid waste management. So day, uh, last in 2013, what we started was we started a joint program between the local, the forest department, the JFMC, and the nature tourist organizations. So where the locals used to collect the waste, segregate it, weigh it, and tie it in bags. So that's the amount of waste generated last year. And they kept the bags ready. And a number of tourist organizations from Pune and Mumbai volunteered to take the waste back. And this year, we have prior bookings done, where you know the tourist organizations, they say, OK, this Sunday we are coming. We would like to take the waste back. So this is not a, an ultimate you know, solution to the waste problem. The ultimate solution would be reduction in waste. But this is at least the storage time of waste in the natural area has been reduced. There's a homestay built up uh, near cars. But now I would like to really focus on what is the, you know, what my research has shown. My, my work was on trampling. So I asked a basic question four years ago, if people are walking on the plants, so what is the impact of that? So trampling is taking its toll. These are the photographs that I've spoken about. This photograph you can still see on Google Earth. It's not recovered, this path. So we did an experiment where, uh, so this was a control. Then there were 25 passes. So 25 times a person walked over them, 75 times, 200 times. And you can see 500 times what happens. Compare this plot with this plot. There is no vegetation left. And imagine in odd cars, this is just 500 passes. And at cars, we record a number of 1,50,000 people walking on a single path. So the amount of soil compaction that is taking place. And we then monitor these plots. I've been monitoring them since the past two years. And the results are scary because a lot of the herbaceous communities are now reducing and the grass community is becoming dom dominant. And if the present kind of tourism continues, then I would expect that the soil would get very compacted and the community will change, the native community. And this is another thing that says that trampling damage during flowering and seed periods for plants can have a greater effect than during non-reproductive periods. And the most, and you know, the trampling impact is most when the conditions are wet than when dry. And both of these are true for cars. People come in the monsoon when it is wet conditions and the plants are flowering. So when you walk over these, the impact is much more than in a drier season. So we came to solutions where we identified a path that had been trampled. And it, it actually shows most of the species that people want to see. And we had local communities, local people you know, standing at different spots to ensure that people walk on the path. So this was tried out last year, uh, where you know, so there were certain, uh, we marked it using local rocks. So there were these certain boards put up. But was it successful? This was the situation. <laughs> where initially when you enter, everyone wants to follow the path. But once you see the carpet of flowers, they just like want to go away from the crowds. You know, there will be more flowers ahead, more flowers ahead. And in that search, you end up going away from the path and going away into uh, the non-go areas. So here I would like to stress a point that, you know, there are a lot of landscape architects here. And I, as a researcher, can point out, OK, this is going wrong, and this needs to be done. but. Can we, as landscape architects, now think of you know, better paths for these areas that are temporary, that cannot be stolen, because theft is a huge issue in that area? Then there are homestays coming. There's a homestay built up by a local, which is very basic. So can we provide them inputs of how to make it attractive? Because another problem is there are a lot of resorts coming up around cars. So it's not just cars that's an issue. The entire area around has been sold off. It's all private lands. A lot of resorts coming up. And in the ne next five years, I would see a situation similar to Mahableshwar near cars. So can we now provide multidisciplinary solutions to this issue? And so something like this. I, there's a friend who works in, at Uganda. And there are children who have made toys out of waste. But not this, but there is an interpretation center planned for cars. Can we make some souvenirs or any kind of thing that gives the right message to the tourists? And see, there are a number of lateral plateaus throughout Maharashtra. So I'm looking at it from the point of view, can we make cars as a model of ecotourism? Because now more and more plateaus are going to be open for tourism. So can we make it as a model so then that model is replicated in other areas? So we need to think beyond ecology we have now is the need for a multidisciplinary approach. 
and a number of volunteers who worked with me and who are still working with me and thank you so much Rena are you also looking at uh, not your your focus of your study is caste plateau but are you also looking at surrounding landscape per se in um, the sense surrounding say 4 5 km radius around caste like how over a period of time this landscape has undergone change like See, with boom in tourism uh, yes so i'm not really doing a systematic study on it i would say uh, but i have been keeping a record of what's happening so uh, a lot of area has been sold off a lot of you know newer plots are being demarcated then uh, when you go towards cars from satara there used to be a smaller plateau near petri which used to be you know full of flowers and there have been trenches dug up there so a lot of changes are happening in the surrounding landscape as well that's but true but do you attribute that to tourism a lot yes i would say yes Yes. So it was beyond caste. Yeah. So uh, in two thousand and twelve, there is a scientist called Aparna Watwe, who is the pioneer of you know work on lateritic plateaus. So she had a grant where we did surveys in the nearby villages. We documented of the number of hotels that have come up, the economic perspective of these hotels, and and one interesting point that came up that a lot of these surrounding villages they are they have natural springs of for water and the source. of you know of recharge for this could be the plateau itself so there's any kind of contamination on the plateau then it will affect their water source as well has been uh, there has been a proposal where uh, from the apiculture institute they are planning but it's not been taken ahead like i remember there was a meeting with the forest department about the apiculture uh, you have shown some results of trampling by human and uh, the car tires Uh, what have you found about trampling by the cattle? So I have not buffalo, buffalo. Particularly. Yeah. So actually, I have not really looked at it. My focus was human trampling, but I can just tell you what the locals tell me. According to them, so they feel if trampling is if trampling by grazing, if grazing is completely stopped, then that would affect the flowering because they feel that in the initial stages, if the cattle feed on the plants, and there are more branches that come off, and there is more flowering, and also the dung adds to the nutrients. So whereas there is no study done as such on what levels of grazing can be permitted because if you see the weight of buffalo and the area of the uh, le- uh, the foot is much more than the human and That's the true. Had. Yes, yes, yes. But your my assumption has been that the grazing has been constant throughout these years. It's there for so many years but tourism is a recent factor so that's why I'm looking at tourism. Mm-hmm.